I wanted to get this one on the um, YouTube side before you do um, that thing you wanted to do about uh, the last reunion with Janine. And it was um, something coming up. That's why I wanted it quick because it's coming up soon. Monday is supposed to be a huge meteor um, storm, not a meteor shower, but actual me meteor storm. Um, the difference is meteor shower is you look up in the sky and it's beautiful and you get a few meteors coming across the sky and, and it's nice. A meteor storm is it's so overwhelming. It actually looks like stars are falling from the sky, like the, the world's ending. Um, I've seen one of those. Yeah, I, I believe it was 1996. Do you remember? Were you old, old enough? I, I wasn't old enough, but when I was reading about the storm, they mentioned that one. I don't remember what it was called, which one which comet caused that it. Was, but it was Pleiades. Yeah. So, yeah. What's this one? Do we know what this one is? Yeah, this one is called... Here it is. I, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Ta Herculids. That's what this one's called. And um, this, I'm, I'm wondering, and supposedly, this is supposed to be a, a, a hit or miss, and if it happens, it's supposed to make the 1996 one look like nothing. This is this one's supposed to be oh, like. And, and, and yeah. we've got the, the rainy season, so I'm going to miss it. Yeah. Because. The but, um, yeah, but I don't know what day when they say it's Monday, I, your Monday is going to be coming first. Doesn't so. matter. I mean, it, it, we, we almost never have a clear sky this time of year, so I'm going to miss uh, it regardless. Um, but let me. I want to tell this quick story about, yeah. I believe it was 96. Uh, do you remember the year you saw? It, it, when I was looking up, when I was reading the article, it mentioned uh, one in 96. I don't remember, but that was the date, no, that's, 96. That's, so, yeah, that's the one. So in 1996, um, me and four other people went down to the beach and we, we, we went far away from the popular beaches to get as far away from the city lights as possible. And so we, we found this uh, pretty secluded beach. I think it was, it's, it's Paradise Beach in Melbourne, Melbourne Beach, Paradise Beach. And um, there's a parking lot with a, just a couple of street lights there. And, um, and we, the five of us went down to the water and we were lying on the beach, uh, shoulder to shoulder. I was on the far right and my four friends were uh, to the left of me. Uh, sitting, lying right next to me was this really strange guy, Steve Kajera. Uh, and Steve was a, a, an ichthyologist, a fish doctor, you know, a scientist. Yeah. And he was the closest thing to a real Spock that I've ever met. Yeah. Uh, he didn't seem to show emotion. He didn't uh, have uh, interest in the opposite sex. He was asexual and everything he did was precise and scientific and analytical. Re very strange guy. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so uh, he, and he brought these huge binoculars too. Yeah. And, and he's like a genius. And I'm like, yeah. dude, why, why are you bringing binoculars to a meteor shower? They happen so briefly and there's no way you don't, you're not, you're gonna spot you can't them. watch. Yeah. You need a, you need a wide field of view to watch this. And I kind of laughed at him. I thought he was silly. And uh, anyways, we're sitting there. And, oh, and the, the meteor storm was absolutely amazing. They literally looked like flaming tennis balls that were coming right at you. And then they would burn up and they would go away. And it wasn't just one every 15 minutes. It was like one every 30 seconds. And they would come in waves. And and by the way, the reason is it was called Pleiades, uh, the Pleiades meteor. Uh, meteor shower is because uh, it appears to be coming from the constellation of, of Pleiades. The the source of the uh, meteorites coming from there. Mm -hmm. uh, quick side note, nobody has ever seen a meteorite shooting up from the horizon. I want you to think about this for a moment. If you have a sphere in space, then meteors should be coming from all directions. Okay? Yeah. And I've looked and I've looked and I've looked and I have never, I found it one that shows a UFO <laughs> coming up, yeah. but it, yeah. I have never, and I challenge anybody out there in your memory, Dan, have you ever seen a falling star shooting up from the horizon? 
No, never. I haven't seen too many shooting stars, but I've never, I've never seen that before. I've seen a lot in my life and I've never, and I looked for them on YouTube, couldn't find any. So anybody out there, uh, trolls, you're going to get banned if you come in here and troll me. Okay. So, uh, anyhow, uh, so we're, we're all God smacked by this meteorite storm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, but suddenly my the, Mr. Spock to my left over, Scott, what's that? And he points about 45 degrees to the right and about 35 degrees above the horizon. And I see something moving and my brain short circuited because I couldn't identify what it was. And at first it seemed really big, like, like enormous. And then as my brain started to, and I was about to say to him, birds, I thought they were yeah. pelicans. But number one, pelicans don't fly at night. I don't know if you know that. And yeah. number two, the wind was blowing very hard from north to south. And these were going from south to north. So I stopped myself and I just said, I don't know. And at first I got a chill down my spine. I thought it was like some kind of demon or something <laughs> because it's, it seemed to be trans. It appeared to be transparent because I could see yeah. nodes, but I could see stars through the nodes. And then my brain worked out that, no, I wasn't seeing one big thing. I was seeing seven uh, smaller objects and they were in formation of a circle and they just continued all the way out of our sight. Uh, now, this wasn't one of the, it, we didn't both go, oh, wow, UFOs. We were more yeah. like, that was strange. What was that? And we, we tried to come up with ideas and neither one of yeah. us could think of what it could have been. We forgot about it, went back to watching the meteor shower. Mm -hmm. About 30 minutes later, me and one of the people from our group, a woman, uh, walked down and we were wading in the water, smoke a joint. And at this point, down oh, farther away from the parking lot, it was much darker, Yeah, you know, because we're farther away from the parking lot. And uh, I was worried about a wave that was coming, and I was supporting her. I, was, I didn't want her to fall down. Suddenly, so I'm looking down, I'm looking at her. Suddenly, she looks up, because we had told her about the UFOs we saw. Yeah. And she was looking up for those. She was looking specifically for those. She goes, Scott, Scott, there they are. There they are again. Sure enough, I look up and this time I can see clearly. And now what I see are seven triangular shaped objects. In the point of each triangle was a white light and in the center was a uh, red light. Very, very faint. More of a glow than a, like a shining light. And as I watched, they they moved, they, they changed formation from a, a circular formation to a V, v formation in mm -hmm. flight. They, move, they moved into a V formation as if they're under intelligent control. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and so both of us were almost like jumping up and down with excitement. And we go running back up to the beach to where my buddy Steve, Mr. Spock, is there with those big fucking binoculars that he brought, which I thought was, you know, stupid. And he's like, yeah. yeah, I was waiting. I saw them through these binoculars. We, we all three discussed what we saw. We all agreed what we saw. We went home, we drew pictures and then came back together and showed each other the pictures and they match. And he made a report to MUFON, which they wrote back and said that that was one of the best descriptions because he's a scientist of a sighting yeah. that they ever had. So uh, long story there. I'm sorry about that. But it has to do with this Pleiadian uh, storm. And, and somebody said like, oh, I wonder if <clears throat> those UFOs were hiding in Earth's atmosphere to get yeah. away from the storm. Yeah, you never know. I, mean, I don't know. How, I don't know how what, what's going on or how it works. So oh, one, one last thing. One last thing. I was all fired up about UFOs after that. I had always been interested in UFOs before that. Yeah. And I went on a one-year quest to find out what they were. I mean, I went on radio uh, radio shows, not talk shows. I, I called in to radio shows. Yeah. I met with other UFO experiencers in the area. I talked to yeah. um, a, a, an Air Force fighter pilot and couldn't find any answer to what I saw. The closest thing I found was a similar sighting in Belgium in the 80s. I think it was. It was a huge sighting. Yeah. 
fast forward to today. Anybody right now on your computer, type into your whatever search you use, anyone, doesn't matter, TR3B and see what you see. That's what I saw. So you know what the TR3B is? Yeah, the R's, R triangle craft. Yeah. Right, right. They they were they were military craft that I saw there. TR3Bs, which are retro-engineered um, anti-gravity ships, and they're triangular shaped. And they have three white lights in the corners and one red light in the center. So that's my TR3B UFO story. And right. it's linked to the... So maybe this will be a good time to see UFOs when there's another meteor storm. Oh, yeah. Well, the question that wasn't connected to UFOs, but um, I, right, well, something you said made me think of... What is your question? So after that long monologue that I just did... Sorry, I had to get that story. That's a great yeah. fucking story. I had to get it out there. Yeah. Well, it's connected, so... Um, all right. All right, so if someone didn't know about this meteor storm, and especially with what's going on in the world today... If the average person went outside and looked in the sky, they would think, all right, the nukes have gone off, we're getting attacked, et cetera. I want to know. Or, alien, or, or an alien invasion. Or an alien invasion. Um, I want to know if this event could be used for, or you can word it differently, could be used. Uh, the, no, I, could I, the meteor, I agree with you. Yeah. Could the meteor shower yeah. be used for an event or a harbinger for an event because comets are harbingers you know they throughout history a comet has passed yeah. and some great event but happens comet, after comets and me comets and meteorites are two different things well the 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 creation of this meteor storm is from a comet that had already passed and oh, now we're passing okay. through its right. true yeah. enough true enough yeah. i stand corrected hmm Justice. The camera for your oh, cards is, is the camera huh? for your cards is so slow compared to um the camera you're yeah, on. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. So you, you, can you see them all now? Um, now I see them. Yeah, I see them all now. So uh, it looks like it could be used strategically, but if it is, it's going to be used for the benefit of mankind. Okay. Um, so we have we do have this strategy card here. Uh, information, words being used in a strategic way justice so in a way a way to bring fairness uh in a loving uh divine feminine sort of way for the whole world um you know a lot of nutrients come from from uh, meteor showers that's what i i'm picking up on that here mm -hmm. uh a lot of uh, um a lot of very uh fertile nutrients are going to be coming from this and fertilizing the land, making it uh, more prosperous. That's interesting. But I don't see anything like you're talking about. Okay. okay. Some people are going to freak out though. Yeah. Now, now this, yeah. this is what you're talking about. And then a lot of people are just going to be celebrating because it's going to be so cool. They're going to, people are going to be out watching. So you're going to have two, two kinds of people. You're going to have some people who are out watching it going, woo, yeah, that's great. And some people are going to think it's a harbinger of doom. Yeah. And once again, I think this is what, this is somehow strengthening the earth. These, uh, the, the material coming from this, meteor shower is somehow uh, making the earth stronger that's so that's really interesting preparing getting prepared for this change that the earth is going through bringing new material from the cosmos onto the 
Earth's surface. Really interesting. But some people are going to be freaked out, but it's not going to be used like in um, uh, War of the Worlds type of thing. Type of thing, yeah. Okay. I, now this, I'm going to just ask this because it's connected to your story. It's not connected to my question, but when you were talking about the UFO, something popped in my head. Do the UFOs use humans for their abilities? Sometimes to fly, sometimes to do special things. Then pull okay. out the uh, yes, no deck. Okay. Explain that again, because I'm a little bit not sure what you mean. Uh, all right, and, and some, some sci-fi things, um, uh, you have a ship, like a vehicle, and in the vehicle, they have like an actual living thing, and they use that either for energy or they use it to do gotcha. something special. Gotcha. Dune. In Dune, the yeah. one of the guilds has that, remember that big creepy... Yeah. weird thing that's the yeah. thing that opened portals and folded space okay i i, I understand what you mean but uh humans would they're being used against their will kind of like though right is it your idea yeah yeah no yes make this short and sweet that's a nine so yes <laughs> and not not only that it's very traumatic for those for the people who are used that way so yeah. that's creepy as hell <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll we'll, yeah. we'll we'll delve deeper to that in another show maybe yeah well we're the spice so we're used for everything um, all right. Well, it's time. It's time for the human race to stand up and take our power back. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let's switch to.